Bring Allah and rise for the month of Ramadan. Oh Ramadan. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. My dear viewers, welcome in our program. Blessings of Ramadan. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us an opportunity that we are having this beautiful month, valuable month in our lives. Obviously, while we say Psalm, it means to keep us away from all those things which have been prohibited during this period. And permissible things would be adopted. And naturally, there are certain rules and regulations. These rules and regulations have been conceived from Quran and Sunnah and elaborated or discussed or defined by the Muslim jurists, Muslim scholars. So today we will be discussing about principles of fasting. Principles of fasting are more important because we must understand how a well-known scholar, Hadrat Imam Azam Abu Hanifa, whose name is Noman bin Sabit Zuti, his contribution cannot be neglected. And his name is an authority to understand Quran and Sunnah. So today we will discuss about the basic principles of fasting. So, in this regard, we have another scholar, inshallah, the same manner of the program or uh, the mode of operation of the program is that it is interactive. He would introduce himself and then we will be discussing about the basic principles. Please. Uh, thank you, Dr. Saab. Uh, I am Professor Muhammad Amir Beg. I am one of the graduates of Alimia Institute of Islamic Studies and a, facul a visiting faculty member of College of Business Management, Karachi, and I'm director principal of Al Sufa Academy. I'm thankful to QTV for inviting me in this useful prayer. So, uh, what are the principles? Because, uh, see, if I want to drive, so for driving, I will have to have license. I will have to understand road signs or road signals. If I want to live in any society or in any country, I will have to go through constitution. If I want to travel from here to somewhere else, I will have to know about cultural norms and cultural laws. And internationally, if I'm driving or traveling or going throughout the world, I will have to know about international law. So <coughs> these are the worldly laws or worldly principles. What is cosmic law and what is universal law? in the light of Qur'an and Sunnah, for fasting. The Qur'an is very significant regarding fasting in the month of Ramadan. Mm -hmm. The basic principles given by the Qur'an regarding fasting is, فَمَنْ شَهِدَ مِنْكُمْ وَالشَّهْرَ فَلْيَسُمْ Whosoever among you finds this month of Ramadan, he must fast. And the timing of fasting has been prescribed, that is from dawn to the sunset. So it is compulsory for every Muslim, man and woman, if they find this month of Ramadan and they are capable of fasting, so they must fast for the whole month of Ramadan from dawn to the sunset and they must abstain themselves from eating, drinking anything or a sexual relationship with the wives. So these are the fundamental requirement of fasting as prescribed in the Holy Quran. And it is that uh, prescription of the Holy Quran that is not only for the Muslim today, but this, is, this, this was prescribed for all the Ummah which have passed before Muslim. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu kutiba alaykum siyam kama kutiba ala ladheena min qablikum. O who you believe, la'allakum tattaqoon. O who you believe, fasting has been made obligatory upon you as it was made obligatory to the nations before you. لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ The basic object is to become God-conscious, to become pious. أَيَّامًا مَعَدُودَاتِ And these are the few fixed days 
for the whole month of Ramadan, either 29 or 30 days. Yep, and uh, so many people, they are confused. They, they say, uh, uh, okay, I will fast, but uh, I forgot to say niya in the morning. And uh, I'm continuing with my psalm. The other people, they say, no. Just this is uh, only uh, uh, you're having this practice of psalm today, but this is not psalm because you had not committed yourself that you are doing it this intention. Mm -hmm. And people are confused, number one. Number two, let's see the rules of fastings are simple or complicated. I think uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made things easy for human being. Of course. Yurid Allah bikum al yusra. That's why. Wala yurid bikum al usra. Usr. And Quran says, La yukallifu Allah nafsan illa usaha. Illa usaha laha ma kasabat. So these are these are the ayat and so many ayat. If I don't know about the basic principles of uh, psalm fasting and say without niya, I continue fasting. You think uh, this would be accepted? As we are talking about the principles of fasting yeah. with reference to Imam Azam of Hanifa, so Imam Azam of Hanifa has clearly uh, described this uh, basic principle of Sharia mm -hmm. that intention is related to the heart. Exactly. If you have made intention of fasting today in your heart and if you have not uttered the uh, dua mm -hmm. or the niya mm -hmm. uh, from your tongue, so it is not compulsory. Mm -hmm. Making dua, making intention uh, with by tongue is only uh, mustahab. It, it is desirable but not mandatory. So in the night uh, if I'm going to sleep and I say okay tomorrow I will inshallah fast and uh, then I had everything whatever I had in my home mm. I ate and then went for salah fajr and after that I forgot mm. to say by tongue or uh, say some uh, the specific words. So I forgot. Mm. It is okay according to Hazrat Imam Azam Abuni for Rahmatullah because your intention is there. But you are waking up for Sahri at before dawn uh, in the month of Ramadan and having uh, something to eat or something to drink in order to prepare yourself for fasting, which is also desirable. It, it intends. That, that shows your intention. One's, one's intention and uh, it's uh, more than enough. Mm. More than enough. The second thing uh, uh, that there are so many interrelated issues during Ramadan. Let's talk of that. Mm. Uh, there are so many uh, people who are suffering from diseases like uh, uh, sugar, um, mm. call it uh, high blood pressure, hypertensy, anxiety, depression. And they take medicine and sometimes they need injection and sometimes they need uh, water. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given them relaxation. Of course. And there are ways and means to uh, accommodate yourself, to be comfortable. So never think that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, has, uh, has asked them to fast because this is compulsory or mandatory. Once, if there is relaxation, then you should take benefit from that. Of course. Permission. But the other category... <laughs> we should not take advantage of that relaxation. Exactly. There are some Muslims who are taking advantage of that. <laughs> they can fast, but just for a minor disease. They say, oh, I am suffering from this disease and I cannot give fast. So this is not. <laughs> and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, after giving this relaxation, yeah. Beside all these exceptions and relaxation, if you f keep fast, if you observe fast, yeah. that is better for you. Exactly. They say, no, today, oh my goodness, without suhoor, 
without sahari mm. or without uh, early uh, breakfast i cannot i cannot continue so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would not forgive and there is a proper way if deliberately somebody leaves this uh, psalm what is uh, what is about him or her i think the one who is uh, living even a single fast during the month of ramadan he is the greatest loser there is one hadith of the holy prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam which says Allah. that if anybody misses single a fast in the month of ramadan single day of the fast in the month of ramadan even if he observe fasting throughout his life he could not compensate that reward which allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has promised during the month of ramadan uh, how about a person who uh, breaks his uh, song before time say okay now i can't uh, tolerate my thirst i will have a sip oh. of water again allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not like this act and there is a there are so there is a ransom hadith. for that fidia yeah fidya. that is that is a kafara that he has to uh, keep fast for cons- continuously for two months yeah for one day for one day for if one he song has, if he has broken one fast or one song deliberately without any genuine excuse but uh, if uh, he has a uh, uh, bleeding from mouth or from nose or he has some genuine reason he can do it yeah and people should ask for him. some genuine medical reasons exactly mm. but not uh, for 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 for, for uh some other luxuries hmm should not be like that so how do you think that these principles are these uh, principles really acceptable for today's generation or they want some kind of relaxation you, you, did you did you see that uh, it is very interesting to see that in spite of all our moral degradation but one thing is very uh, appreciating the today's youngsters mm. they feel pleasure mashallah in keeping fast mashallah and uh, when that environment of fasting prevails so you could see even a child of uh, an age of 7 or 8 years he ask his uh, his parents that uh, i want to keep fast and you know there is a there is a that shows the ambition yeah. and the uh, motivation yeah. which we see in our youngsters yeah you might have fast in the month of ramadan you might have uh, seen Uh, a happy face of a small kid or son or daughter or girl and boy the first day while there is time of maghrib sunset their faces are shining like shining. like uh, like like moon alhamdulillah their innocent faces mm. and while they make dua why is acceptable i remembering here one of the hadith lisaimi farhataini there are two pleasures for the one who is observing fast one at the time of breaking the fast at the time of yeah. aftar yeah. in the fitri and one at the time of meeting with his lord yeah so he would be uh, having a great pleasure and farhatan means true happiness true happiness and happiness is from inside and this is happiness that he has successfully completed mm-hmm. fasting of that day so it is a sense of uh, success and completion which make him pleased that allah subhanahu wa taala has bestowed him that tawfiq that he has completed uh, that fast even if it is it was uh, a very hot day but he uh, bear all the diffic- all the, uh, the hardship of hunger and thirst and alhamdulillah uh, he has completed that day of fasting and now it is a time of aftar so you um, you think uh, that uh, these principles uh, make our character and uh, we learn how to behave in the society how to respect the month of ramadan and how to show solidarity of muslim ummah in the world because uh, this is time 
to act upon the basic principles of Islam. And this is month of orientation. To, 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 to tell our friends, our brothers and sisters that uh, we spend our life in learning computer, mathematics, physics, uh, biochemistry, uh, business administration. These are the subjects which must be learned, which must be utilized. But most important subject is Quran. Most important subject is Hadith. And manners of reading of Quran and Hadith can be can be uh, can be seen during this month of Ramadan. So when we go to for Taravi, when we go for prayers five times and see the mosque, how to sit, how to pray, how to learn from Imam. So these are the basic principles of this month. And I believe uh, we could have continued this topic, but we are running by the shortage of time. Uh, as usual, uh, please say something. Uh, I would like to thank uh, all my sisters and brothers who are watching this program and pray for all of them that may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shower his choicest blessing of Ramadan upon all of us. My dear brothers and sisters, Alhamdulillah, today we discussed about principles of fasting principles of Ramadan, respect for Ramadan al-Mubarak. Why? Because we will have to follow Islamic jurisprudence that's, uh, that's known as fiqh. And Hadrat Imam Azam Abu Hanifa rahmatullah ta'ala and the Muslim scholars, they have told us the basic principles of this month. This month needs loyalty, sincerity, and submission before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and following life of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. May Allah bless all of you. Ameen. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah ta'ala wa barakatuh. Allah hafiz and goodbye. That is for dhikr, remembering Allah and rise for the month of Ramadan. Oh.